Let's begin our worship this morning by picking up our worry stones, holding them in our hands. And I want you to close your eyes and to breathe in deeply and to let it go. To breathe in and release it. Breathe in and release it. This morning, as we stop and stay here with God, I want you to imagine what it looks like to have a heart that's overflowing with love. Picture in your mind what it looks like in your house. When your house is full of love and overflowing with kindness and generosity. I invite you to picture it with our church, with the people of our church. What does it look like when we are overflowing with God's love? And I invite you to picture our community here in Hinckley. What would it look like if our community was overflowing with love? To reach that spot of overflowing love, we have to let go of what's on our hearts, what we're worried about, what is holding us back from God, what's holding us back from loving each other. I invite you to let go, place those worries in your stones. God's touch is within us, between us, and among us, and around us, as close and real as this stone is in our hands right now, is how close God's love is to us. Let us pray. Into your care we offer now our worries, our fears, and strife. We turn to you and know that you are near, your light your love is surrounding our lives. Amen. Let us light our candles now and set our worry stones next to them. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now. Or as another version of the scripture calls it, living life abundantly. Being together either physically or virtually is one important way for us in this moment. Perhaps we can keep up some of our connection habits we have exercised well beyond our time of isolation. This next scripture is an extended version of our theme scripture for our Easter season series and shows us the value the early Christians 
some of whom had to gather in secret and isolation, were supporting one another abundantly. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the pro pro proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to, the, to their number those who were being saved. In the scripture, we see the desire of God for us to be taken care of for us to live to the fullest and for us to support one another in having abundant life and community, food and gladness. Sometimes the sacrifices we have endured because of our attempts to slow this virus can feel as if we've been robbed of our well-being. But we can also turn that around and see that these sacrifices are how we share goodwill and well-being with one another. They show how our hearts are overflowing with love. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I love the community that is created in Acts. And here in Acts 2, it describes the fellowship of the believers. It describes what they did and what they were like when they came together. It's a passage that has always inspired me. I mean, it starts with, they devoted themselves to the teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. So that new community was trying to figure out who they were now that Jesus wasn't around. And what they decided is that they needed to hear the stories. They needed to share the stories of Jesus. They needed to talk about what he had said, how he had said it, whether what he said made sense. They talked about all the things he shared with those apostles. You know, those are the points in the scripture where it says, and he took the apostles aside and shared with them, and that's the secret teaching. And those apostles were sharing it with all they encountered. They came together. And when they gathered together, not only did they learn and explore the word, but they broke bread. They prayed. And they were so alive in the spirit. They were so alive and present in the spirit that it says that many signs and wonders were being performed. Maybe it was just that in that moment, because God was so real and present to them, that they experienced and saw God in the places that they used to take for granted and didn't notice that God was there. They saw God all around them, and they wondered. They wondered. They saw the signs of the Creator's presence. And then it 
shares that they created a new community together. They held all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Can you imagine? What does it look like in a world where instead of hoarding things, we share? Instead of trying to go to the store and find bacterial wipes and hand sanitizer and toilet paper that are bare and empty on the shelves because everybody is squirreling them away. Those who had some offered some. Those who had enough and more than enough shared with everyone else. Those who believed held things in common. And they distributed what they had as any had need. They distributed what they had as any had need. This scripture has been speaking to me a lot this week because we've learned this week that 3.8 million people in the United States are out of work. 3.8 million people. There are so many people out of work that you've seen the pictures of the food pantries and food banks where there are just lines and lines and lines of cars. There's a lot of need. And you've heard the stories that government allocated all this money And it went to mostly those at the top. Those who already had more than they needed got more than they deserved. And those, the 3.8 million at the bottom, those without, got, but barely got. As I'm preaching today, Rent is due tomorrow. And some of us received $1,200, which may or may not cover rent or a mortgage. And some of us are still waiting, wondering what will happen when there is not enough money to pay rent this month. So can you imagine a world where they thought about what it meant for all of them? For those who had need, they gave their possessions and goods and distributed them. They gave to those who had need. They didn't ask questions. They didn't put tests. It says that if you had a need, they distributed it to you. Imagine a world like that. Imagine what would happen if we took this moment and space, this time and place where people are hurting and in need, where the needs are great, Imagine if we listen to this passage. Imagine if we believed as that first community of believers did. That in common, together, they could live more abundantly and everybody's needs could be met if we shared. And then it says, day by day, they spent time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad 
and generous hearts. We've spent time together. That's a tough one right now, right? But here's the thing. From what I've been hearing from all of you, you've been reaching out to each other more than you did before the virus. You've been calling to check in with people. You've been calling to see how they are, if they're okay. You've been sending cards and letters. And that's who we're meant to be, together, taking care of each other. What if we did that after we're allowed back out of our houses? What if after this time, instead of going back to the way it was, we envision the way it could be? We start spending time together. And then it talks about breaking bread at home, eating their food with glad and generous hearts. And the truth is, that's what we're doing now. We, as the church, are now the church in our home. We, as the church, are now the church in our homes, breaking bread there. And when we break bread in our homes, what are us on our hearts? As I said, they had glad and generous hearts. And the truth is, we've seen that. We've seen people offer. They said, hey, I've got this government rebate check. So for 12 people who are in need, I want to buy you $100 worth of food. We've seen people who've taken that on, who said in this moment where I still have a job, if you don't have anything to eat, let me know so I can get you something to eat. In this time where there are so many hurting, hard to think about glad, gladness. But here's the thing. How many have I heard from each of you that have told me about the experiences, their experiments they're making in cooking, about the new things they are trying, about the run on yeast because Everybody's at home trying to break bread. And so if they couldn't find yeast, they figured out how to make sourdough bread. Everybody is turning to food partly for comfort. As a way to pass the time. And because we have no place else to be, when we cook that meal, we're actually sitting down together with each other, with our family that may have used to been in all sorts of different places with all different concerns at sports, at work. And dinner time didn't always happen or it happened on the run or in the car. But now, now we have the time and opportunity to share that meal together, to eat together. And then it says, they were praising God and having goodwill to all people. So after they broke their bread, reminding themselves of those words that Jesus said, of that love that Jesus gave, of the heart he shared with us that overflowed with love. As they broke that bread, they praised God. And they thought about their connection to others. 
Instead of thinking about their separation and differences, they thought about the way they were brought together. They had in their hearts generosity and goodwill to all people. I think we need that. We need that sense of love that we give not just to our family, but to all people. They praised God, had goodwill. And because of that, day by day, God added to their number those who were being saved those who were being turned around, those who were being connected by love, those who for the first time found people who looked at them, didn't see a stranger, didn't see someone who was last or lost, didn't see someone who was only their pain and hurt. Instead, they offered them the opportunity to join in this new community, to share in the love that was overflowing in abundance. That's why this passage is my favorite. Because it shows us who and what we could be if we believed and followed what Jesus taught us. It showed us who the church is called to be. And it showed us that even when we're at home, that we can remember that call. That we can remember that God invites us into this world and into this community and into this love where we break bread together. We pray. We experience the wonders of God's presence. And we share all that we have. Amen. Let us pray. Just a little more love to touch the places in us yearning for hope. Just a little more love to soothe our weary souls. Just a little more love to strengthen all of those providing care. Just a little more love to see the most vulnerable. Just a little more love to have a generous spirit. Just a little more love to share with those who need just a little more love, just a little more love, that we may share the love that Jesus taught us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
In fellowship together, we find ways to share your good news with others. As we enjoy your blessings, help us to give from our abundance with glad and generous hearts. Amen. Come. Come to the table where we break not only bread, but we share with each other. We share our lives, where we've been, and all the people who have brought us here. We share our lives with those who have shouldered our burdens and magnified our joy. We welcome all here who are without family or home. We welcome all who are without nation or tribe. We welcome the traveler and wayfarer making a temporary stop to receive a piece of kindness, to offer oneself as a likeness and image of the divine. Here at this table. We remember, we remember all those times that Jesus sat at the table. We remember when he sat down with that group of strangers who were now connected. The ones who were undesirable and unwanted. And he ate with them. He ate with the tax collectors and the least and the last and the lost. He sat down and when he was at the table of the poor, he spoke to them about God's love and desire for a world that's different. But he also sat at the table of the wealthy, the powerful, the leaders. And at the table of leaders, he shared with them God's desire. God's desire for them to take care of the poor. God's desire for them to practice justice at the table. Jesus spoke to what was needed and what people needed to hear. One time he was out preaching and teaching and as he looked around he saw a crowd of people full of those who were hungry. Hungry for the word. Hungry for companions on the journey. Some who were just hungry. And he turned to the disciples and told them to feed them. He told them that he had compassion on that crowd of hungry. And that they needed to eat. Jesus shared with us that in breaking bread together, we become a new kingdom, a new family, a community of love. So this day, we do what Jesus did on that last night he was with his disciples. He took some bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he said, This is the bread of heaven. This is broken for you. And then after supper, he took a cup of wine. He poured it and he blessed it and he said, This, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my love poured out for you. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Let us pray. Holy One, we gather bound together with your spirit in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this bread and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. The bread of heaven broken for you. Take and eat.
Let us pray. God, thank you for bringing us to this table where we become one, where we share your body and blood, where we share your love and your hope, where we share your grace. May we leave here and feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, and love as we have been loved. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will. Remember that Jesus loves you and always will. Remember that I love you and always will.